Nick Cannon mornings on Power 106. We going all the way up. It's time for those up close and personal conversations. And when I say up close and personal, I mean conversations with people that I look up to, that I admire, that are fixtures in the game. And this brother is all of the above, plus so much more. Truly a legend and and really, man, an architect in what is going on right now. Uh, the one and only Busy Bone. Yo, yo. Salute, King. Salute to you, man. It's a long time, long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's good to see you. I'm glad to see you shining like you always do. Oh, man. Likewise, man. The new album, Carbon Monoxide. I got to live with it. Man, you going in. Yeah, uh, definitely. What's dope about it to me, in my opinion, is that you took what you've all, always done, you know what I mean, from that the bone vibe, but then you also showed everybody that you can do what they do in the day, too. So the, the beats is on point, but it's like you switching your flow up. Like, so you, you got you got the busy flow, but then you got all of, which really a lot of all of the flows that are going on today originated from. In the, so it's probably easy for you to rap like, you know, how everybody's vibing today, right? Yeah, definitely cadences and chopping it up and timing and stuff. I study it like I study the science behind it. So, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it I wouldn't say easy, yeah. but it definitely isn't difficult. Well, I mean, I remember when Bone first came out, and I was like, yo, they they doing something completely different. Like, not only were the cadences uh, new, but then adding the harmonies and melodies, it was more than uh, one person kind of doing so. So you guys took, like, really added musicality to to thugism, really. I, I don't think there was anybody that had the, the type of tales and and the, the the narratives that y'all had that were so melodic and, and, and harmonizing. And now we see it everywhere today. Like, it feels like every rapper, if you're not doing that, then you're not even considered hot. So how does that feel to know that you birthed this whole concept? I think, you know, it's, it's a good thing. It's humbling, you know, to be with so many people in my group. You know, we like the Wu-Tang Clan. You know, it's so many of us that you can lean on your other member so you, you don't get too egotistical behind it or get too happy-go-lucky or feel like you're the only one that spliced the, you know, spliced the industry. But, like, on a on a more broader spectrum, it's more um, I'm, I'm grateful to put something back into hip-hop, you know, more, than, more so than just taking from it, like, that I was able to bring a style forth and people are taking it and, and growing and feeding their children and, and their family off of it. So... That feels real good to know that you did something to really help, you know, people's lives. You yeah. know what I mean? To to find a way and, a, and an angle and a lane, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, let's, let's get down to it, man. The album title, Carbon Monoxide, for those who don't want to smoke, <laughs> <laughs> uh, clearly, you know, that... Uh, it, when I listen to it, it sounds a lot of, like, you know, this was inspired and maybe even a little motivated by a lot of the controversy that was going on initially. We all heard the the debate of, you know, who was the biggest rap group of all time. Uh, and then, you know, the Migos stepped up and, and, and said they want to wear that crown. You felt like you needed to remind some people that, you know, to this day, y'all got what they call active recurrence, copyrights, songs that would go on forever. Uh, and there was an interesting debate, and you addressed it quite a bit. Uh, on not not just the Migos. I, I heard some Kodak Black stuff on there, some 21 Savage stuff on there. You unapologetic, saying it with your chest. Like, you just like, you know, I, I got something to say. These youngsters got to, they got to, take heed is that is that the message ultimately i mean you know for a few of them i wanted to put together a full body of work and i wanted to talk about what was actually happening today and everything that my fan base was talking about and my social media stuff and everything i got going on and those respectful platforms right and just kind of you know, I had to address the issue because, you know, they was like, you got to say something, B. You can't have Lazy out here putting out a song by himself, and then it's, you can't do that. You got to, like, right. like, you got to represent the Bone Cult. You got to right. represent the Bone Fan, the Book of Thugs, and yeah. all the rest of those guys that been Harmony, uh, bone, all the stuff that they've been doing for all these years. You know, Bone got like a cult. That's why we always stay on the road. But right. going back to the record, um, I wanted to make sure that I got it out, and I wanted to squash it once and for all. You yeah. know, I didn't think that they really would want to do anything with me lyrically right you know what I'm saying? like i had talked to you um i talked to dj d wreck a long time ago yeah. and he told me he was like b 
he was like, man, they are afraid of you. They are afraid of you, B. I'm like, that's what's up. I appreciate that. And I was in a, a turning point in my career, and I really, really needed that. He talked to me that night, and Tyrese talked to me, and David Banner talked to me that night. Yeah. And it kind of turned me around. So, yeah, definitely. It's it's not just based on that, but I definitely addressed the issue, and I wasn't going to throw the songs away just because 21 and Lazy – you know, hugged it out and dapped it up. And right. Apologized or whatnot. So I wanted it's to It's still sure. good music. God At the end of the day, right. you, you kept it on the wax. Now, now, how are you going to feel or how do you feel when you hear those songs that are saying, oh, that's... That's just the older cats mad at the youngsters doing what they do. They mad, they mad and hating because we getting money and they they kind of and they not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I look at it just like with Eminem. You know, he really didn't get an answer because M got money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that got some money, they don't they can't say that. Nobody right. can say that. And it's just I believe it's their defense mechanism. Right. You know what I mean? For lack thereof. And I'm not putting anything in those parentheses because yeah. I want to see everybody grow and I don't want, sh uh, you know, shat yeah. on the next generation. <laughs> right, right. That, you know, so I just believe that's their only defense mechanism. And. So you know, can gotta we have some money. Yeah, Basically. I was about to say, can we talk money for a second? Because Hell I yeah. know the amount of money that Bone generated in, in total and continues to be on the road. And then today in hip hop, it truly looks like these young cats are getting way more money than what we saw. But it could be just mismanaging money. And and when you think about if we're just going numbers for numbers, like, like you said, you have a physical copy uh, right there of an item that people purchase where streaming things are moved around you're not, not you it seems like you're making money it seems like show money today might be a lot more than maybe what it was in the past but actual hard copy how an item actually you know a sound scan skews seems like there might have been more money back in the day what do you think no, I think that um, I think it's more money nowadays that's going going to the artists, and I do think it's a lot of mismanagement. You know, it's a mm. lot of three sixty deals going around. A lot of a lot of artists perpetrating being independent when they not. Right. You know what I mean? And they getting that big bag, and right. you know they keeping up the best that they can possibly keep up. You know. And that does that last? I mean, someone who's been in a situation who was around a lot of money. You got to manage your paper no right. matter what. You know, I, I'm crypto. I'm stocks and 401ks right. and life insurance plans now. Right. You know what I mean? But back in the days, you know, it's a, it was a lot of mistakes that were made. I'm just blessed to be able to have a continuous thing for over 25 plus years. You know, Bone Thugs and Harmony been worldwide everywhere you want to go. So publishing and points and percentages and all that kicking and screaming and fighting with what right. I was doing paid off you right know, for nowadays but a lot of artists they really don't <clears throat> i had just dm'd the baby um because i found out that he had a deal and i just dm'd him and i was just like look i appreciate everything you said to us on that about us on that one interview um you know save your save your paper crypto you know stocks you know da -da 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 -da, just giving him my my basic floor plan right so he makes sure and, and with all of this stuff coming in at him just make sure you take care of yourself you know what i mean you want a cleveland zone so i want to make sure i reached out to him north carolina in the house too yeah yeah so interestingly enough uh i mean because that those are wise words to this generation of rappers but then you can find yourself also you know having confrontation with this generation as the big homie as the og uh, who's been through it. I mean, a, a street cat from Cleveland to be here today, still rocking, still shining in your glory. Is there more of a responsibility of the cats, the the OGs, to to step up and say, let me show y'all how to do this? I know it seems sweet now. I know the money seems like it's not ending now. Are those more of the tales that we should be offering up? Uh and if so, do you think these young guys are going to listen? Yeah, that's why I just think we got to pick our times. We can't nag these youngsters in the height of their roller coaster. Right. They already on the roller coaster screaming on their way down, having such a good time. And then we trying to, you know, give them that. It just got to be at the right time. And then you got to be careful of the whole, you know, ah, this old head and da 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 da, -da And, and that's going to make that's gonna make anybody trying to give you advice bitter. You know how it is when we in school, once we hit high school, teachers never gave a damn. 
Right. You know, that when, once you got there, you had to do things on your own, Blase Skip. Right. So I think it's the same basic principles. It has to be well received in order for it to be given, in order for it to catch a wave, just like anything else. If you want it to go viral, then, uh, you know, it's got to be well received. It, it, and that's with anything, whether it's advice or, you know, anything. So as yeah. long as everybody's treating it right, you know, I don't want to talk to no youngster and they one ear and out the other acting like, I don't, what the fuck are you talking about? Nothing, motherfucker. You'll see later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, real talk, was there anyone uh, when when you was first coming up in the game that tried to tell you that you didn't listen to or somebody that you did listen to and you're like, damn, I wish I would have paid attention when the OG was trying to talk to me. Man, I tell you, Ice T sat all of us down and gave us the whole game right before he went to New York. He was like, don't always ask for the money up front. It ain't always about the money with these people out here. You go out there, you put the work in, and the money will be there for you. This is right before he went to New York, and I, and it, that stuck with me. You know, and it, it, took, it took me about 15 years in order to apply it. But so I, I listened to him, but I didn't apply it. Right. But now I'm able to apply it. Now when I get on a plane or whatnot, it's not always about bringing a check um, back home. Right. You know, it's about m making progress and, and 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 putting your foot in the right places and stuff like that. So definitely Ice T more so. To, and of course Easy and you know um, talk to Dre. He let me listen to Eminem right before he came out. He was like, "What you think?" So. Oh, a lot wow. of those, oh yeah, definitely. Really? So I, that's interesting too. Like even your relationship with Dre, even because you know y'all was ruthless and all like that. That that was all love. Yeah, yeah, it was all love. You know, we had a little problems, but that was just us. Everybody being young, Dre always was. He was always on some Uncle Dre, you know, OG Dre. You know, he was never rah 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 like we was, and you know he. He always, uh, my boy Lil Bell tell me, he say, Dre told me that you his favorite artist. I said, well, if that's the case, let's do a record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, it's always been love. He's um, he's very special to me. You know, uh, Ren and Yella and Q, you know what I mean? They very, very special to me. I don't want to put all their business out, but we, 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 we are real good with each other. We're and that's good. the thing, man. I, when we just talk about just the journey of Bone and... Yeah. And from when we first seen y'all from, you know, the the first single, Thuggish, Ruggish, Bone, like mm -hmm. all the way to even to date, it's been quite the journey, some ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I mean, even stuff that when you see in the public light, we, we didn't really know what was going on. I mean, until, unless once you, if you're in the industry or you know you, you guys personally, but within the group and, and sticking together, how... How are things today and in that journey, how has that helped keep everything together? I think it helps, you know, that we was homies. That's that's very first, like at a very young age, we had to count on each other. We had to break bread with each other. You know, if one person was eating, they had to split it with the other ones. Right. You know, Lazy was working at KFC and he was bringing home all the chicken for us to eat because we was all <laughs> like homeless that. and stuff. It was like that. Yeah. We're talking about 15, 16, 17 year old kids, you know right. what I mean? Um, so yeah, that that's helped us along the way and learning to di di diversify, you know, business and friendship and money and splitting everything down even and no one man above and you know just learn. That's hard. That's a hard concept for for yeah. anybody to understand. Like especially yeah. when you see there's so much money going on and that you got you may have to split something with somebody else. Or one person may not have done as much work as the other. And to understand that as at a young age in the public eye can't be easy. No, nah, no, nah, it never is. So that's why we started out as good friends first. And, you know, we couldn't be, can we cuss? Yeah, do you Yeah, say? we couldn't be bitch-made motherfuckers to each <laughs> yeah. other. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We couldn't be like the type of niggas that, you know, we, we looked for flaws in each other. Like, oh, you acting like a hoe-ass motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this motherfucker over here, what this motherfucker did, and he front for these bitches. And did it. Yeah. So we stayed on each other like that earlier on, you know? Right. 40-ounce days, beer-drinking days. Right. And um, it, it groomed us for later on. And then when the business came at us, it was just like, whew. Right. And money just hasn't stopped flowing since we got into the industry, you know? Um, and being homeless guys, you know, at first, it's just... It, it's overwhelming, you know, but you really, you gotta be grounded. You know, I'm, I thank God, you know, I, Jesus and my Lord and Savior and, and 
you know, right. my resilience, my perseverance, the end of my fears and all of those different things, not worrying about when I die, I got the afterlife there and really, really putting it forth so I don't have to walk around the earth, you know, shaking everywhere I'm going, uh, going right, about right. this, I'm, you know, I'm gonna be all right. So I really, I, I accredit it, you know, all of our, our, our sanity and, and, and our reasonable decisions to that, our spirituality and being grounded. And, and plus, and he, people, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I'm going to cut you off because you talk about spirituality and I know you're a very spiritual dude. But I remember even times, uh, especially on a couple of those albums, they was like, man, Bone Thugs, they they dark. They It, it almost feels demonic and all right. that stuff. And you guys had to go through that world. And then now for to see that, you know, you're talking about, you know, your your sanctity and all, all of those things. Was that just a phase or was that just misconstrued and people didn't understand it? I mean, we played the Ouija board and we wrote a song about it. So we wrote a song about pretty much everything that we that we did. Right. And we stopped playing the Ouija board because, like, we were sitting on a bunk bed and Lazy was asking who was going to die first in his family. And he was like, when he found out it was somebody that he didn't want, so he through the Ouija board, and then they picked it back up, and then bed started falling down. So a whole bunch of stuff started happening. So it's some real like, shit. Right, and I ain't fucking with that shit no more. So, <laughs> right. You know, we learned our lesson hands on. And then when Easy e he was like, y'all got to do that song, man. I like that Ouija song y'all did, man. And then he started talking backwards. And then after he passed... Here comes the, the, the marketing and the promotional train, and here comes the company. You right. know what we need to do? Let's make some money off of it. So they put that mysterious back in the days when, um, you know, CD covers and reading CD covers was the thing to do. Um, so, you know, that it just, and it manifested from there. And it, you know, it was, I think it was a whole lot of Was that, did that, you feel like that may have affected some of the darkness uh, in the darker times? Because, or that was it all just marketing and gimmick or and, they, and it just happened to be a coincidence? Yeah, I think it was marketing. And I think the only thing that took the gimmick stuff out of it was because we did play the Ouija board. So right. that kind of made it feel real enough to us to where we didn't, you know, scream and shout you know, at the company, like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And we never been bubblegum no goddamn way. So, right. yeah, definitely. And, you know, I, I just look at it as humanity in general really don't give a fuck about right. the number six all like that. <laughs> they just, we just don't give a fuck. So like, right. Am I only going to keep $665 in my pocket? <laughs> in order to count a G, I'm going to have to pass that number. You're going to have to get past you know, the, so, that, that third six. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I think that mankind in general really, you know, just brush that shit up under their feet and, 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 and stomp past it like right. they always do. You know what I'm saying? And some don't. Yeah. You know, but but it you know it's But hard. as we know, you know, the spiritual warfare is real, but it's how you perceive it. Yes, sir. So and, and that your perception on the game has always been an interesting one. A few times we've had the opportunity to chop it up or even watching your interviews of how you move. You always been optimistic and positive, even during the times where it seems like it might not be the case. You always try to see the artistic approach. I always appreciated the fact that you was always focused on the art first, and it seems like whether it's the, the musicality of, of how you put your songs together or even how you, you approach this, most rappers don't come at it from uh, an artistic approach. Where does that come from? I think the artistic side of me comes from just, like, basically when I was kidnapped and my um, I was missing my mom. and What year was this? This was 80... Let's see, I was four to six years old, so 76, from 80, about 81 to 83. Wow. You, you, you were kidnapped that long? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yep, and uh, John Walsh, shouts out to John Walsh. He found me from America's Most Wanted. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Found Actually found me on the, um, at the end of his um, broadcast for his son, because he was looking, this before he knew his son had gotten killed or whatnot. Right. Rest of heaven to Adam Walsh. Um. So yeah, yeah, that like, but anyway, so, I don't know if everybody really even knows that story. I mean, that's that's some people know it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But that's where I kind of cultivated my 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 skills because when a, my mom back found us, my sister was like, "Mom, he can really really sing. He can really really sing." And then from that point on, you know, going through foster homes and you know, because my mom was going through her things with who she was with or whatnot, right. going to school with black eyes and all of that um, pressure turned into you know just me reading a lot and, and doing a lot of art and, and music first and foremost I always had a high-pitched voice so that's right. where that's really where it came from wow yeah. and and then going knowing that like i said 
the journey that a lot of people don't know and coming from being young kids uh, from Cleveland, yeah. getting a deal, coming out to L.A., doing all of that stuff, yeah. and then reaching the highest of the height <laughs> of, that a rap group could reach. I mean, y'all was doing records with Phil Collins, win, winning awards, global tours. Um, and then to be here today and look back on all that, what was the most imp- impactful or, or uh, meaningful time during that whole journey? During that journey, I think the most meaningful time was right before Easy E died because mm. it was so free. Like right. you had your big homie taking care of everything, damn near the air that you breathe. Wow. It was eating, clothes, just everything. My kids helping me with my children. I had children when I was 15 years old. Right. So I'm 16, 17 years old. I'm telling Easy about my kids and I'm making sure that they're good back at home where everybody else is trying to party and do their thing or whatnot. Um, so that was the most impactful time for me. And then after that, it was just a whole whirlwind of bullshit and right. wasn't so much about money not coming in or any of those things. Right. It was just people started dying and you started meeting new cousins and right. new friends and there's an expectancy and then a certain anger at times if you're not helping someone that you may have come up with or right. have some affiliation with you. So dealing with those things and then everybody trying to, you need to go solo. Right. Or you you know, and, and tugging at you, they mean well. They just want you to learn and, and not want you to get played in the industry. But that's when it that's when shit became to be that that was a shit storm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yes, sir. And that's because they talk about like the darkness in the industry. And is that really where it is that the idea of selling your soul or compromising? Is that where it really stems from where People think, oh wow, he's he's not the same as you know the person that I knew before this industry came. Right. I don't think that that shit exists. I think that's a myth. I don't, you know, if there's a such thing as Satan, why would he want something that you don't even want? Like, how <laughs> right. dumb do you think this dude is? <laughs> right. You know, like, why would you give me something? I don't want your shit if you don't want it. Right. You feel me? So, but it, it but not not so. On that point, I don't really like think, metaphorically. Yeah, they're just I, saying yeah, like, I don't yo, your so. family starts to treat you. The people that you thought was close oh, yeah, with you, right? You know, they start thinking you owe them and all of that oh, stuff. Oh yeah, I don't, like, yeah, it I takes think, you to a dark place. Yeah, I, it it does. It does. It's just who you are at the end of the day is what I think. If you got the light inside of you, you you're born with the light inside of you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And God take care of babies and fools. That's just in case you don't have the light inside <laughs> of you. Right, so, right. I just look at it like that. Some people, man, they just live on the dark side. Some people are people that you'll look at like, why Why did God give you this blessing? Right, right. Real you know talk. I mean? yeah, that's how I go. And then speaking of light, I mean, we we on that other side now, the new project, yes, sir. The, the the carbon monoxide. What are, what are we wishing to accomplish with this? Because it, it's fire. I mean, all the way. You have, It sounds like you're having fun on it. You're doing skits like you Obama, like all of like, it feels like not as you addressing all of the stuff you need to address, but I feel like you're in an amazing space as an artist and, and, and back to like having fun on a record and, and being an artist. As your great friend says, I'm in my jello. <laughs> right. I'm in my jello <laughs> right talk. now. Yes, yeah. sir. Like I'm, and I've been on a roll. I'm in there doing five songs a day. Yeah. I got a great format now. I got a great recipe. I'm just, making sure that the veggies and all the food that I'm putting in it is clean. And yeah. I plan on doing this for another three, four years and then kind of maybe lean back and get the biopic done and bring that heartfelt stuff out and stuff like that. But yeah. it's and definitely that, me I spread heard, my wings. Yeah, I heard like the, the biopic, like everybody wants to hear that story. I mean, even from what you just said, from you being kidnapped as a child to where you are today, like the bone biopic has to be something that's in the works right yeah i'm thinking that's gonna be more netflix because my guys plan on being on the road for another six seven years and really cranking hard after the rock and roll hall of fame and moving on to stadiums and really go live nation with it and just real rock like that real rock i mean because y'all got those type of records yes we do my good friend (laughs) and so that's kind of the way we're patterning it out and i'm able to build this brand and build my own personal superhero so when i get back to the justice league (laughs) the prices are high 
higher, the crowds are bigger, and I'm just really trying to make the brand as big as we, I'm trying to make that Sprite yeah. as big as we can, uh, you know, because Bone Thugs and Harmony is Coca-Cola. Each individual member is, you know, it's a can of Sprite right there. Yeah. That's, you know, some part Fanta, of, there's a, a, part a, of a the, root the, beer. <laughs> yeah, conglomerate, so. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, but I'm in my Jello right now. I don't plan on stopping. Hey, man, well, I appreciate the time, the energy, and all of that, but, you know, I always say, we, we had a great conversation, but I got to hit you with the firing squad questions as well, too. Come on, come this, on. This, this is just off the top real quick, as fast as you can answer them. Uh, whatever comes to your mind when I ask you off the top, this first one is always the same question. Busy Bone, would you rather be loved or feared? Loved. Hmm. It's off top. Now, speaking of fears, what's Busy Bone's greatest fear? That Jesus doesn't love me. Hmm. Back to the love. Lighting it up real quick. Your favorite movie of all time? Goodfellas. Really? I'm a Scorsese guy myself. Uh, best piece of advice you've ever received? Take your time. Worst piece of advice you've ever received? Spend it all. <laughs> Real talk. Worst job you ever had? Cleaning up shit. <laughs> Cutting. Uh, that with sounds the, like that's horrible. With, with the lawnmower company. Really? Yeah. Like just that was like I was the pooper scooper. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh most prized possession. My children. Hmm. If you're on an island, you only could take three items with you. What are you taking? My wife, food, and water. Hmm. Smart man. All right. One album for the rest of your life you could listen to. What's that album? Carbon monoxide. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. All right, favorite cuss word. Fuck. <laughs> uh, I got to ask you. I do actually want to know that. And I ain't going to say top five rappers. I want to know Busy Bone's top five spitters. Because obviously your, your flow is definitely in the top five of just flows. To So I want to know who you, whose flows do you respect? D.O.C. Ooh. Slick Rick. Ooh. Dana Dane. Okay. Hello. Slick and Dana ain't the same, no? Yeah, that's why I love them. I, was like, I'm like, I, got, I might even let you, them I can, lie I, in that. Okay, good, they could be good, in good. that same Rock pocket. Him, rock him. Oh, definitely an originator of a flow. Pun. Pun. Big As pun. a flow? Okay. Yeah, Pun was, he was, he was devastating. Definitely a beast. I just. He was devastating. Yeah, yeah. He just didn't have enough time. In yeah. Order to, you know, he was, he was, he was. Devastating. Wow. And um Tretch. Mm, those are all amazing flows. Yeah, they spit. Yeah. And that's I always gotta go to the fact that like you guys are one of the few people that did a record with Pac and Biggie. Yeah. Like that's that's monumental right there. Yeah. Um and both cats that kind of when it comes to flowing, lyricism as well, but just actually spitting and being rappers mm. kind of put their stamp on it and, and cats you know, came after you. Even knowing, like, yo, you came from that generation where cats, na they're rapping like how you guys rap. Like, you set the set the bar. But during that time, everybody was doing something different. Today, everybody sounds the same. Why do you don't think we could do that today? Why do I think that we can't or do why that? they're not like why, why does everyone sound the same today i mean because you know it's that mc hammer uh uh vanilla ice vibe it's if if we all can do this and 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 it's flashy and it's glamorous and it's making money let's get on it and it's easy you know um and that's what i think because it's so easy once you master auto-tune you don't even really have to say words <laughs> right. because the auto-tune carries out your rhythm when you say words you can't really get the the auto-tune to do what you want it to do right so i think because it's so easy and it's just one sound it's just the flip side of it is when you don't have a signature voice you're fucking yourself in the industry because mm. that's what makes you legendary your mm. signature voice everyone that has a signature voice it's like morgan freeman you know when he is when he uh, yeah. james earl jones yeah. you know who he is when, they, when you hear that tone yeah they let him represent god so <laughs> you know how powerful a spirit uh, uh excuse me a signature voice is so that's the flip side that's the flip side yeah. of the coin but i think to answer your question is it's easy yeah yeah and now speaking of signature to end the firing squad i always ask this you've built quite the legacy one word that describes Busy Bone? Enigma. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
<laughs> Care to expound for the people who may not know what enigma means? Um, a mysterious, basically, a mysterious person, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There it is. Well, hey, man, it's been a great conversation. Honor. Always mine. Love. The pleasure, the pleasure. Carbon monoxide, get it now. It's up. It's in there. Like I was, I was going to say it's, you stream it, but he wants you to go buy it, too. I need, well, one the, more thing you before do both. you leave me. Yeah, before you leave me, it's, I just wanted to say that we're putting together the physical copies because we still want to remind the people about the sound of music and, and how the continuity of it and how it's crispier with the, right. ble- bless you, and how it's crispier on the on the CD as well. But thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, no I doubt. Definitely stream so it, much. but. Definitely. And if you got it, where, who got a CD player? Um, I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> they still got them in cars. Yeah, they still got them. Yeah, it's so <laughs> You, you can play I it on, on your PlayStation. Bro. Yeah, you can play it wherever you know, wherever you want. But sometimes people just want to get it. That physical. Nah, no, you gotta have that physical. Because Bone is a collector's item. Group. Cats, are, they doing vinyl now, which is dope. yeah, that's dope. Too. That's I what that's I love. Back. That's yeah, back. yeah, going all the way up. Uh, Busy Bone has been an incredible conversation. It's Nick Cannon mornings on Power One Hundred Six.